The Watchtower organization does not make predictions about the future anymore. <laughs> but they most certainly have in the past. The Watchtower group, the Jehovah's Witness group, let me read to you some of the things they've said. Led by the initial founders of the group and then moving on into their later, um, their later time as well. In 1897, in 1897, it was written in Studies in the Scriptures, Volume 4, our Lord, the appointed king, is now present since October 1874. The belief was that Jesus had sort of quietly returned and only, only the Watchtower faithful knew about it and only, they could, only a couple of them could maybe encounter Jesus, but that he had returned in 1874 to the earth. To the earth. Then in 1899, the statement was this. Um, in The Time is at Hand, the 1908 edition, because they change things sometimes when they fail. It says, the battle of the great day of Almighty God, which will end, end in 1914 AD, with the complete overthrow of the earth's present rulership, is already commenced. The belief was that there was a battle going on, and Jesus was going to have his millennial reign starting in 1914. That was the prophecy. Now, if that happened, it's been a lousy reign. Because right after 1914, we had World War II. And then, uh, World War One. excuse me, and then we had World War II. I mean, this has not been the millennial reign of Jesus, or it's been a great disappointment, and it was largely overstated in the Bible. <laughs> in 1916, 1916, they said this, The Bible chronology herein presented shows that the six great 1,000-year days, beginning with Adam, are ended, and that the great seventh day, the 1,000-year reign of Christ, began in 1873. A thousand. Okay, so Jesus is already reigning. Then in 1918, they said this. Therefore, we may confidently expect that 1925 will mark the return of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the faithful prophets of old, particularly those named by the apostles in Hebrews 11, to the condition of human perfection. Human perfection. Now, this is interesting. This is written in a book called Millions Now Living Will Never Die. I actually have a copy of this, um, I think from the 1920s, but a digital copy that had been scanned, so I got it on PDF. Um, which I, I, I love that I, I just love having this stuff <laughs> for some reason. But, but in 1918, they said in 1925, seven years coming, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the people mentioned in Hebrews 11 were going to physically reign on earth. Now, in, others, in other places in that same text, millions now living will never die, as I was perusing it. He's, he explains very clearly this is a physical reigning. They will be running the political government of God on earth. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob physically. And that was going to happen in 1925. In 1925. So then, in 1922, they reiterate, the date 1925 is even more distinctly indicated by the scriptures than 1914. Because in 1914, it didn't happen. So 1925 is even more clear. We know for sure it'll happen in 25. 1914 was, you know, we thought so, but, we, oh, but now we know. This is really clear. In 1923, they wrote this, and this is in Watchtower Magazine. Our thought is that 1925 is definitely settled by the scriptures. As to Noah, the Christian now has much more upon which to base his faith than Noah had upon which to base his faith in a coming deluge or flood. So we're getting more confident in this than, than Noah was of the flood. In 1925, here's what they wrote. Watchtower Magazine, January 1st. January 1st, 1925, page 3. The year 1925 is here. With great expectation, Christians have looked forward to this year. I would look forward to it just so they'd see them proven wrong. Many have confidently expected that all members of the body of Christ will be changed into heavenly glory during this year. This may be accomplished. It may not be. In his own due time, God will accomplish his purposes concerning his people. Christians should not be so deeply concerned about what may transpire this year. So they're hedging. They're hedging. Later on in 1925 in September, they wrote this in Watchtower, September 1925, page 262. It is to be expected that Satan will try to inject into the minds of the consecrated the thought that 1925 should see an end to the work or a, a, an accomplishment of the millennial reign of Christ. In 1926, here's what they wrote. Some anticipated that the work would end in 1925, 
But the lore did not state so. The difficulty was that the friends inflated their imaginations beyond reason, and that when their imaginations burst asunder, they were inclined to throw everything away, because after 1925, many people left the church. Many people left the Jehovah's Witness organization. Rightly so. But yet, I just read to you their publications, which said that it was going to happen for sure. And now they're, now they're just lying. They're just lying. In 1931, they wrote this. There was a measure of disappointment on the part of Jehovah's faithful ones on earth concerning the years 1917, 1918, and 1925, because they had many false prophecies, which, disappointed, which disappointment lasted for a time. And they also learned to quit fixing dates. <laughs> so these are the, this is the aftermath. The people who didn't leave the organization are like, don't do that anymore. They're frustrated. In 1941, in Watchtower, September 15th, it says, receiving the gift, the marching children clasped it to them, not a toy or plaything for idle pleasure, but the Lord's provided instrument for most effective work in the remaining months before Armageddon. All of a sudden in 41, they're speaking of just months being left before Armageddon. But they're not setting a date. They're just whispering about it. Only months are left. Well, years go by. And then the Watchtower once again starts to predict in 1975 the return of Christ. But now they're doing it in a slightly more subtle fashion. They're not just saying, in 75, this will happen. They're like, it, the scriptures seem to indicate it will happen. Anyway, let me, um, let me read to you. It's in 1968, it says, True, there have been those in times past who predicted an end to the world, even announcing a specific date. Yet nothing happened. The end did not come. They were guilty of false prophesying. Why? What was missing? Missing from such people were God's truths and evidence that he was using and guiding them. We agree. <laughs> we agree on that. But then in a publication called, Why Are You Looking Forward to 1975? In 1968, the church starts whispering again. Oh, 75 is the date. 75 is the date. Oh, chronologies. Oh, the Abraham's birth. They, they fixed Jesus' birth date and then fixed it from there. October 1st, I think they said, was the birthday of Jesus. And then... They did all these math using like Usher's chronologies and this and that, and, but then you factor this in, and they had 1975 as the date. So they whispered and whispered and whispered. And what we see is, why would they keep doing this, knowing their track record of being wrong? Well, on a chart that lists the, the, um, the number of people who are Jehovah's Witnesses, every time they say on the, on the timeline, as it goes, you know, 1847, 1857, 1860, you know, every time they say that the end of the world's coming and Jesus is coming back by a certain date, they get a big lift in membership. Place, it just doubles. And then afterwards, it gets a dip. And they're frustrated. Then a little time goes by and they're like, you know, that membership thing worked really well last. And then they do it again. They say that, so 1975, again, you have this big lift from 68 to 75. The church like went, got really big compared to what it was before. And then in 75, it dropped down. <laughs> and they, instead of adding numbers, they lost. And then uh, they're supposed to stop setting dates, but we'll see if they do it again. I like when they set dates because it proves that their information did not come from the mind of God. It proves that it did not come from the mind of God. The Watchtower is wrong. Those leaders are either delusional or liars. There's no other option. This is why prophecy is such a great way to prove it. I can approach a text and be like, oh, you're the word of God, huh? Prove it. And if it can predict the future, then it can show us that it is the word of God. This seems to make it even more special when we approach the Bible. Because you can approach the Bible now saying, you know what? If this, if this book has fulfilled prophecy, it's the only one. All other comers have fallen short. No one else has fulfilled prophecy, genuine prophecy. So this would be the only one. How do you know your religion's right? Prophecy. Hey, this is Mike Winger. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it's been a blessing to you. If so, I encourage you to like and subscribe to even share the video just to spread the truth. Also, I have a series on YouTube I've sort of alluded to on this video, so I want to mention it to you real quick. It's a series on evidence for the Bible, and it starts off with prophecy detailed examinations of a variety of prophecies that we find in the scriptures that are verification that the Bible has information that comes from the mind of God and not man. So I encourage you to check it out. I will put a card up here in the video that you should be able to click on your on whatever device you're using right now. 
but I'll also put a link in the description of this video. And I encourage you to check out my channel. I have over 100 videos with all kinds of different content. I try to do a lot of good hard research before I share information and to make sure that it's always reliable. And I do check the comments, so hopefully we get a chance to interact at some point. Have a great day. God bless you. How could I ever give glory to you?